Hello everyone and welcome back to Real Analysis video series. So, so far in this video series we learned about convergence and divergence of sequences. We visualized them and we learned about squeeze theorem. Okay, so now in this video what I'm going to do is, well, let's see. Well, let's see. So, let's think that we have the sequence 1 over n plus 1. Alright? And to find whether it's convergent or divergent, we have to find the limit, right? Perfect. Now, let's say you gave the task to find the limit of 1 over n plus 1 to two students. Let's see, how about John and how about Mike? So, two students. And both of these students come up with two different limits, like John come up with 0 and Mike comes up with 1. So which one is the correct limit? I know, of course, you know the limit is zero. Uh, you know John is right. But how do you prove in an abstract manner that John is right and Mike is wrong? Now, remember, we have a definition for convergence of sequences, right? We learned that in the very first video. This is the definition. We use epsilon, capital N, and we learn what it meant, right? We have a definition. So, how do we use this definition to prove that this sequence is converging to 0, not to 1? Okay, so that's what we are going to learn in this video. Um, some people even call it like a formal proof to show that um, limit of a certain sequence is a certain number, right? I, I know what you get what I mean, okay? So, how do you show that here in this sequence, 1 over n plus 1, the limit is 0, not 1? All right. So to do that, let's quickly recap the definition, okay? Now we need to, so what, what should happen is we need necessary tools. So what, what do we use in this definition? We use a n. Well, a n is 1 over n plus 1. We already know this. Capital N is the suspected limit. So here we have two suspected limits, but we have an L, right? We have an L. Now epsilon is an arbitrary number, so it's okay. We have that. So we have to find capital N, we have to come up with a capital N position. So we have to find those things. But what is, what is this epsilon and capital N? What is this definition exactly mean? Let's quickly recall. Now we have this sequence. So if a sequence is converge, converging to a limit L, okay, a real number, it has a certain property. The property is that you can give any epsilon value, any arbitrary epsilon value. Let's take a very small epsilon value like 0 0.00001. Now, when someone says, okay, this is my epsilon value and they ask, okay, can you find a term in your sequence where the distance from that term to the limit, to the suspected limit is epsilon, is this much small? Can you find us? Can you find such a position in your, a term in your sequence? Well, you think about it for a minute and, well, you can give a better answer. If the sequence is convergent, if, if, if you can find such a limit L, you can say that, well, you know what? I can give you this position capital N where any, any position, any term that comes after that position capital N, any terms of the sequence that comes after position N is even closer to the limit than this epsilon value that you gave me. Okay, so that's the property that a convergent sequence has. This works for any epsilon value. Doesn't need to be small for any epsilon value. Okay, all right, so that's a quick recap. Now to prove this, to come up with a formal proof, there are two paces, okay? So the first pace is you have to do some scratch work. Scratch work means we have almost every tool in the definition except capital N. We have to find capital N. So let's do that. So let's, uh, let's see, let's check John's statement. Is the limit zero? So what do we do? So let's check that. First, you start with an epsilon. So for any epsilon greater than zero, remember epsilon is positive, okay? I think I forgot to mention that. Now what I'm gonna do is in this scratch work, you work backwards, okay? You start from this statement and you go backwards, okay? So we know a n, one over n plus one. We know the suspected limit from John is zero. So we calculate the difference. So one over n plus one minus zero is one over n plus one, absolute value. 
now we can drop the absolute value okay because n is a positive number okay n is always positive so no need of absolute value because 1 over n plus 1 is always positive all right so now 1 over n plus 1 mm, is smaller than 1 over n do you agree think about this well n plus 1 is definitely greater than n because n is a positive number but if you take the reciprocal i mean n plus 1 is greater than n but if you take the reciprocal because n and n plus n, n is always positive we can come up with this statement right bigger the denominator smaller the number right okay now okay so we want to we want to make sure this is less than epsilon for any epsilon so how about rather than trying to come up with this relationship well i can say my epsilon is greater than 1 over n okay rather than working with this one this statement here i work with this statement because of this relationship that i have here now why is that because if 1 over n is less than epsilon for sure 1 over n plus 1 is less than epsilon right because 1 over n plus 1 is anyway less than 1 over n right so if this holds automatically this holds right so that's the argument so it's a logical argument okay you have to have logical arguments here so in scratch work we found this relation so so this is key so let's write it again 1 over n less than epsilon now i'm going to switch epsilon and n cross multiply because epsilon and n are positive so i can do that so 1 over epsilon is less than n from here all right so we i can rewrite this as n is greater than 1 over epsilon now this is exactly what we have in the definition for each epsilon greater than positive uh, greater than 0 there exists a capital n where simple n is greater than capital n implies this relationship so we already have this relationship right so 1 over n is less than epsilon it happens if n is greater than 1 over epsilon right so let's let's be let's be clear let's be clear here 1 over n is less than epsilon o and hence 1 over n plus 1 is less than epsilon this statement happens if this happens right i mean they are interconnected right okay so we can decide capital n from here to be 1 over epsilon because capital n always depends on epsilon oh shoot i forgot to mention that in the beginning ah so when so when i explain the definition i mean epsilon and n has a direct connection they are related n always depends on epsilon so because of that people like to write capital n as n parenthesis epsilon okay smaller the epsilon bigger the n right so think about it think about for a moment the meaning of the definition you will see that capital n always depends on epsilon so capital n is 1 over epsilon right from here now we know capital n now we can sketch the proof okay uh, come up with the formal proof the formal proof is now we move forward okay so we work forward we work backwards in our scratch work now let's move forward so let epsilon be greater than zero any epsilon and let n well let capital n be 1 over epsilon because we already know that we found it from the scratch work so then then see what's going on here okay so now this is the beauty so then when n greater than capital n, simple n greater than capital n this implies simple n is greater than 1 over epsilon because capital n is 1 over epsilon right now from this relationship if you switch n and epsilon now see we are working forward okay backwards of this scratch work so this relationship implies 1 over n is less than epsilon right if you switch epsilon and n now this relationship implies 1 over n plus 1 is less than epsilon because in the inside the parenthesis we can write 1 over n plus because 1 over n plus 1 is less than 1 over n this happens so from here implies we can have the absolute value of 1 over n plus 1 is less than epsilon right because anyway 1 over n plus 1 is positive no matter what it well what what n value you have because n is always positive perfect this one implies 1 over n plus 1 minus 0 absolute value of that is less than epsilon right it's 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 very logical right subtracting 0 doesn't make any difference so we can write this see this is exactly the definition now see we are done with the proof hence the limit when n goes to infinity 
limit of 1 of n plus 1 is 0 because L is this one. So see, we fulfill the definition. We have epsilon, we have a suitable capital N, everything here is logical, and we got this statement. This statement here is absolute value of A n minus L less than epsilon. Okay, so if we write the definition alongside here with the proof for epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N belongs to natural number such that N greater than capital N implies this statement right so we know capital n that's the only difference here, right so zero is in fact the limit john is right because we have a logical arguments here and it completely correctly fits to the definition okay all right now let's see that mike is wrong so how do we show that mike is wrong again we start with our scratch work so we find a n minus suspected limit L less than epsilon. So let's 1 over n plus 1 minus 1. 1 is the suspected limit here. So if you subtract, if you simplify inside, I get minus n over n plus 1. Okay, so I did that fast using the common denominator. All right, now here we have to utilize the absolute value because when you take the absolute value of this, this negative goes away. So it's n over n plus 1. Now think about n over n plus 1. So the terms of the n over n plus 1 will be like uh, 1 half, um, 2 third, um, 3 fourth, um, 5 over 6. If you carefully look at n over n plus 1, it's always greater than or equal to half. So I can say this statement, right? Am I correct? See, it start from half when n is equal to one, but when you further move on, it increase. It gets bigger than half, okay? It does not get smaller than half, right? So n of n plus one is surely greater than half, greater than or equal to half. Do you agree? Okay, make sure it, you digest that. Perfect. Now that means we can come up with a statement, epsilon is definitely greater than half, right? Definitely. That's a statement. That's a, 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 a restrictment uh, on epsilon, okay? That's a rule on epsilon. I cannot find the suitable word here. But we have a rule for epsilon that if, if, if this statement, if this statement to be valid, we need epsilon to be greater than or equal to half. Can epsilon be one over four? Think about this. If epsilon is less than one over four, or if epsilon is one over four, this statement does not hold. This statement does not hold. So the definition does not hold, right? For epsilon is equal to one over four, the definition does not hold for limit, if the limit, if you think the limit is one, All right? Can you see that? Okay, so that makes, what, what, what does that, what does that mean? Well, that means when L is equal to one, when A n plus one, not A n plus one, what am I saying? When a n, the, when the sequence is one over n plus one, if you think the limit is one, it's wrong because the definition doesn't work for epsilon is equal to one over four. So the game here is, if you think that the limit is wrong, okay, uh, all you need to do is to find a certain epsilon value that the definition doesn't hold, that this relationship doesn't hold, okay? If you can find such a one epsilon value, then you can, uh, formally prove that the limit is not one. So we are done here. So because of this restriction of epsilon, one is not the limit, okay? Um, a limit when n goes to infinity, it does not fit the definition, is not one, okay? Now think about this, you cannot find epsilon. So we, for John, for John's case, for limit is, limit is zero, for that case, you cannot find a, a, a count example for epsilon. You cannot find epsilon value that doesn't work or doesn't fit into the definition, okay? See here, we started with any epsilon. It fits logically. See, these are very logical statements. It fits beautifully, all right? So that's the difference, proof and disproof, okay? How do you prove, how do you prove the limit is correct? or not, okay? So we prove that John is right, Mike is wrong. So I'm gonna do more examples of this in the next videos, okay? All right, thank you very much.